Hi, this is George Free from MartialArtsMedia.com and welcome to another Martial Arts Media Business Podcast, episode number 39. And today I have with me, all the way from Arizona, I believe, Kiyoshi Fred De Palma. How are you doing today, Fred? I'm doing fantastic and thank you for having me. Awesome. So Fred is a eighth degree black belt, started martial arts in 1981, running his own school since 1986. So we're going to be talking a lot about how he got started, where he is now, and exciting events that he's also hosting around the United States as well as Australia. So first and foremost, I guess to just start from the beginning, who is Fred De Palma? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm still always trying to figure that one out myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I do live here in Arizona, which... Um, uh, people that don't know where that is in Australia, it's, it's uh, just inland California. So I like to tell everybody, um, Arizona's all beach, just no ocean. And as soon as wow. California falls in, then I'll have beachfront property. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm, I'm in Arizona. I'm originally from Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut is the other side of the country. So um, Arizona's the west, Connecticut's on the east, it's the nor northeast in New England, kind of the first states that were settled. I grew up in Connecticut, Rhode Island. Actually started my first school there. That's where I did my training in 1986. I opened my first school in uh, Newington, Connecticut, that grew to four schools. Um, shortly after that, um, packed up in uh, 1990, sold my schools to my managers. Took a year off, traveled cross country, liked Arizona, and started over. Um, so that's it. But my my system is uh, Kenpo. I've okay. always trained. I teach, I teach one style as Kempo, but to me, it's really not the style that matters. I know everybody's in love with their style, and they should be because that's what they teach. I mean, you know, you, it, it, it's, it's what you study. It's what you do. You should love. But it's really about the instruction that's being given uh, more than the style, especially at the beginning for the students. Awesome. So I want to I want to go go back there just to your story. So you said you had four schools, and then you, you packed up. Did that mean that you started completely over? Was it... Did you sell that completely, or was it sort of a franchise that you extended further? Um, it was. I sold them completely. Um, I did finance them for the guys, but it, it was theirs. When I first moved to Arizona, I was flying back every month uh, to oversee testing, which then turned into every other month, which then turned into uh, four times a year, which turned into two times a year, which turned into I'm not going back. <laughs> kind of thing. So it, um, it was just you know breaking away slowly. So that way they can be successful with what they're doing. Um, but at the same time, I didn't do it as a franchise. Um, and I didn't even do it as a name use at the time. I just did an outright sale of it. And they would bring me back for seminars. That's more or less how I get paid to do anything. But I, um, I didn't have it set up like I have it set up now. I just wanted to, I knew I was going to be all the way across country. And back then, before the internet and all that, very hard to run a company on the other side of the country without being able to email and so on and so on. I mean, again, this was all pre-email and, and pre-video and pre-cell phones, so. Sure, but there's gotta be a lot of, I mean, you know, we're so used to the internet now, but you know, it's, it's only been a couple of decades, really. How, how, how do you think that actually helped you? Because, you know, my thinking would be, you gotta be so accurate with your systems and instruction because you don't have the advantage of this face-to-face -face and instant I mean look at us talking from Perth to Arizona right now you don't have that so how do you actually go about I mean what can you take from that installing those type of systems and things um, from then to now yes yeah well it's kind of like if I if I had this capability then um, I might have kept the schools it might have been a little bit easier to oversee what was happening um, I mean, that's when I had to use full-time accounts and everything because it wasn't a QuickBooks or a banking service. I mean, it wasn't credit cards, you know? So everything was done a little bit different, which would have been, I felt at the time, a lot of work to do from here to over there. Um, so that's why I sold the schools to the guys so they could take care of it. Um, you know, they could make the profit and make the living off it and make it or break it on their own. Uh, my whole thing when I run schools and even schools I have now is – I make sure that my managers and my school owners get paid the most. You know, I just need to collect a little bit from here and there, but they're, they're the breadwinners of the schools. But if I had this type of um, technology, then I probably would have kept the schools and continue to help them grow their schools for as long as I could. 
well, without a doubt, this would have well, this would have come in so much more handy than, um, you know, even when I was in Connecticut, I had my four locations. I mean, to get anything done, I had to drive to each school. Yes. You know, to where now with eight schools here, I don't know when the last time I was at one of the other schools. Um, awesome. It's uh, my house is located right between two of my schools, and each school is about a mile and a half from my house, so that would be like 3K. So I have a school three one way and three the other way, and I drive by one of them to come here, and I just kind of look to make sure it's still there, and and I, I come right down, but I don't need to be there. You know that's and and that's a good thing if I don't need to be there. If I don't need to be at the school, it means the manager and the team is doing perfect. Means the system's yeah. working. That's there, it. We have a problem. Right. And again, that's all about systems and systems is something that that doesn't happen overnight with me. You know, it was, it was a, a long journey of developing. Um, I think uh, things that I learned in school, you know, and you, sometimes you go back and say, boy, what did I learn in school? I got to tell you what, when I was in high school, I took two classes. I took uh, I took a lot of classes, but I took two classes that matter now. I took typing on the old typewriter, you know, one of those. Just because I thought it was a great class to get an easy credit and meet girls. So um, I took typing because I need the easy credit <laughs> and I want girls. And then I took the school store, which was called DECA, which is where we sold like candy bars and notebooks and the school jerseys and things like that. Again, another easy credit. But I learned all about retail and I became president of the school store. And um, I learned so much in that class that I didn't plan on learning anything in that carried over to, to, to what I do. Um, so, you you know, I was lucky with that and I spent time in the, the Marine Corps, um, the USMC, and learned a lot of self-discipline tactics there about not giving up and following through. And I, I think with those three main things and a grandmother that raised me um, a little bit hardcore, I didn't know how to quit from running my martial arts school when banks and everybody else said, you know what, you're not a real business, go get a job. You know, some people might run the other way. I was like, well, challenge accepted. This is what I want to do. I'm not going to give up on it. And I think nowadays it's actually, well, it's easier to run a school, but sometimes it's harder to get it out there, especially in the U.S. because I have a school there, another one there, another one over there. They're all around me, you know, and um, and I work with them all too. I don't care, but they're, they're all over the place to where we used to be the only guy in town. People just knew where to show up. Now that they're all over the place, you have to actually reach out there and let people know you're here, kind of through this uh, internet, this this thing on the internet that we do nowadays. Awesome, and I, I want to get back to that question because this is something we talk about a lot in our uh, Martial Arts Media Academy about, about are we, our focus is really just helping people with the marketing side of, of getting the word out. And a big topic is really cutting through the noise because as, as it's easier with all these internet tools, it's also a lot harder because there's so much more noise, there's so much more distraction. So you really got to, to, to really make it in the end of the day, you've got you to gotta know your stuff and you've got to have a way to differentiate. Yes. So, so how do you go about that? Uh, I don't. I pass it on to somebody else. Um, you know, I mean, seriously, no, I, 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 my motorcycle right now is done being worked on. I, I'm, I'm really into motorcycles, dirt bikes, street bikes. Um, I take off in a couple of weeks for a 10,000 mile motorcycle ride, which I'll be gone for about three weeks on it. I enjoy it. But when I'm at, when I'm at the motorcycle shop, I'm not a mechanic and he's explaining some things to me about my forks and I'm looking at him like, what? And he keeps trying to tell me about bushings and this, that, the other. I said, listen, 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 if you want to learn how to kill somebody, come see me. I want to get my motorcycle fixed. I'm seeing you. Let's kind of stick to our profession. You know, now it's, it's just a funny thing. It's a joke. We all kind of laugh, but it's true. I'm not an expert about Facebook and social media and marketing. I know stuff on it because obviously I have to understand what's happening. I get the opportunity to talk to a lot of people that do it and to pass on their information, but I'm not an expert at that. What I'm good at is gathering a lot of information from a lot of people and making sure I have the right people doing the work for me. Um, my wife does a lot of our social media stuff, but she's not an expert at either, but she does actually take classes on it to try to stay up. So that way when she is talking to some of the people that do things above our pay grade, she gets what they're saying. She can communicate with them. Um, so I, I think that's all important. I mean, heck, I remember when the internet first started to get out there in computers, uh, and I mean computers, because my original schools, that's how long I've been around, we took attendance and everything on a piece of paper. And then I bought Commodore 64, and did absolutely nothing for me, but I actually had a computer then. 
I was told computers are going to make my life easier. All that's happened by me putting computers in all my schools has made me busier. <laughs> because now there are so many forms and there's so many, you know, graphs and charts and so much to do for each student to make it organized. You're doing so much more than you used to do. It didn't make life any easier, made life a little bit more organized, but gave you a lot more work. Look at all the software programs that sold out there to run your martial arts school. I bet most martial arts school owners out there listen to this. They have software to run their school because I do. You probably only use 10% of that software. Or you probably only need 10% of that software. The rest of it is just taking up your time to look at things that don't matter. Because if your classes suck, I don't care what your software does. <laughs> it's not going to keep your students. So, so, so that's it. But I, I think with all the, uh, you know, uh, the, like you said, cut through the noise. The, well, before the internet advertising, because it, it, it costs so little to do it. You know, when I did newspaper advertising uh, in the 80s and, and all through the 90s, beginning of 2000, we would average about five to $6,000 per location in marketing, in newspaper um, and direct mail. Now, all that doesn't work anymore. We still have a presence on some little neighborhood things that don't cost us a lot, so it's there, but people don't see it come running in. We spend a lot less money on social media, but now everybody's used to it. And that's why you need to have the experts go through it because it used to be emails at first, right? Before Facebook and everything was doing an email account. Now nobody opens their emails anymore. So that's in the past. We got to continue to move on and move forward. And uh, people like you, um, this is who everyone needs to be in touch with because this, you know, this is what you do. It's not what I do. For sure. I do the karate thing. I train managers to run schools. You know, I train staff. Um, if I was going to do the social media thing and be in charge of all that, I'd close down the schools and focus on that. <laughs> let's be let's be a master at least one thing. Awesome, I've got a out of mind. So. All right, cool. So, and funny enough, we actually still get some good results with with email when we when we structure them in a in a very personal way. But I want to go yes. back to your. I want to actually just go back because this will be great for people listening. When when you you packed up and you, you moved over to Arizona and you started you decided to start fresh. You you had a lot of experience. You'd already run four schools. So what's what's the key things that you actually did differently when you started your your new journey with your new schools? Well, number one is I only wanted to own one school. I was done being a multi school operator. I also used to throw big tournaments. And I was done doing karate tournaments. I used to fight and compete. And then I also threw some large tournaments. I said, I'm not going to do any of that anymore. I'm just going to run one school. So there's an organization in Arizona called AZ Mars, which is the state tournament organization. I own that now. Um, so that failed on me. I ended up throwing tournaments and getting back into it again because I just, I just love it. And I only wanted to own one school, but we have eight. So I guess I'm wired a little funny. But the, the things that I learned, you know, you all, whenever, if you ever have the opportunity to start over, you always do it better than last time. You know, it, it's kind of like hiking up a hill. The first time you figure it out, the second time you know what areas to avoid. It, it was the same thing. You know, I knew I needed better staff right off the bat. You know, I opened my first school when I was 18 years old. So I didn't know anything about training staff. And I had some friends that would help me out. But, you know, it was I was learning as I went. So when I opened up the next school, I want to make sure as we were building the location out for four or five months, I was training people four hours a day in the building to be my future employees. And they were training on, in martial arts and they were training in the history of our school. So that when people talk to me, they they're talking about and they were training in the regular business stuff they were going to be doing enrolling students and, you know, so on and so forth. So they were working four hours a day, just not kicking and punching. That was maybe three quarters of it. But the other quarter was a lot of the, the history and also the business side of the school. So when we opened this location in Arizona, it was actually, I have a, a few schools in Gilbert, but um, my town when I opened here, it was uh, 1991. There was, um, the population was about a little over 30,000. And now it's over 400,000 in, in the one town. So it grew really fast. And in the decade of the 90s, it averaged 100 new homes a month. And I didn't know that going in. I was trying to open in a small, quiet town. And um, it, it backfired in a good way for me. Um, but, you know, we, we just did a lot of training. So when we opened that school on opening day, which was, I think, February 4th, if I remember right, we had over 200 appointments before we even opened the doors from doing some pre-marketing. 
And that was newspaper marketing. I actually even had little things they cut out of the newspaper and mail in with your check for the trial program. Because we have the phone. That's how we got all of our starter students. Um, so by the end of month two, we had over 200 active students enrolled, all white belts. Awesome. So it was a lot of right place, right time. I've never been able to duplicate that. I've never been able to do the exact same thing. You know, it'd be great if I could every time I open my door to have the exact same result. But yeah, I think it was all about timing then uh, at the time. It just worked out for me. But, yeah, the things that you learn from one to the next, without a doubt. You, you, it's just like going to seminars or, or training or fighting in the ring. You realize this doesn't work. I'm not going to do it anymore. Or you realize, you know what? I need to learn how to do that better. One, one or the other, you know. And uh, that's that's what I did with opening the new schools. I was doing good in Connecticut. I had, I had one school of 600 students, but I changed my model to smaller schools um, with less staff and less overhead, and uh, it just worked out great for us. All right, awesome. So, so you you had eight schools, and you got back into the tournaments, and you're also hosting events. Is that right? Yeah, so um, Martial Arts First um, is the company that I run. It's more or less, and, and I'm, I'm just honest with everybody about it, it's a byproduct of running the schools. So um, with my school, some of my managers have been with me over 20 years um, managing these locations. They do a great job. Uh, like I said, if I have to be at them, it means there's a problem. That doesn't mean I don't want to be at them. I do, we do most of the extra activities or anything at this location where my offices are. So I don't need to go to all the schools. And we do all of our belt exams where we rent out gyms. So I get to see all the students. I personally hand everybody a belt. You know, so I don't have to physically be in their schools. Um, uh, so where were we on that? I just, just lost track. Okay, so, so, so going just on, on, on the actual events. So you've moved oh, from... Oh, so martial arts first, right. Martial arts <laughs> first, you, there you go. <laughs> so, so what happens is working with all of our managers, and there's a class going on with a whole bunch of kids in there right now. If I can turn this camera out, it, it's so hard because my office is in the back. But, well, we can see one or two kids. But there's uh, about 60 kids on the floor right now, and this is a school my son runs. Awesome. So he's out there doing it. Well, martial arts first is... Uh, it, you know, I'm already dealing with the managers and what we're working with them on managing and growing their schools allows me the time to work with school owners. Um, it's kind of like I'm not needed at the school and they kind of don't want me to be there to help them. Um, you know, they, they, they don't want dad looking over their shoulder with everything that they're doing. So uh, it, it gives me opportunity to work with MA1. And the way it started was in 07, I had a local school owner um, come up to me and, and give me a good compliment. He says, you know, you're great at training and staff and instructors. Do you mind if I bring my instructors down to your school and we do a combined instructor training? And I was like, not at all. So, and he was in an area, we had four schools around him. He was in the middle. He was the type of guy I'd see at a tournament. He'd always have a cup of coffee in his hand and he'd walk up and he'd go, hey, I just want to say thanks. I'm like, for what? Because I signed up four new students last month. I'm like, yeah. Goes, yeah, they saw your commercial on TV, and then they came down to my school and signed up. I'm like, you idiot. But, uh, so just, just a real nice guy. So that's how MA1 started. We're doing staff training together, and we invited all the other local Arizona schools to join us. After doing that a few times, the other school owners, since I had you know multiple schools, were like, can we stick around and talk shop? So it went from instructor training to also business training. That went on for a few years, and then some people outside of Arizona just said, hey, can you open it up outside of Arizona? And that's where that began. I went to Australia and Europe and, you know, all around the U.S. doing it. But what I'm able to do is besides working at an actual school, seeing what works, what doesn't work for us, you know, being here. Because a while ago, I actually had a corporate office in a beautiful corporate building with, you know, all glass walls and, you know, the big conference room. And I loved it. It made you feel real special because all, all the other tenants were attorneys and so on. And um, I lost touch with the karate school because my guys were honest with me and they said, hey, the stuff they tell us to do, it, we just can't do it at the studio. It looks good on paper, but it's not practical. And so that's when we closed that down and moved back into school again so we can stay in touch with everything. So what I'm able to do is, besides talking to our managers because we have you know two meetings a week with them, um, I'm also talking to other school owners around the world. And I'm getting different bits and pieces of information from everybody. So when I'm talking to one school that's having this challenge or wants to know how to do something, I know somebody else in the same situation. And I can find out what they did that worked and pass that along. And so it's all about networking, but, but not everybody has the opportunity to call 55 schools to try to figure out how to network. So I'm just here to help people network with what we do. 
So, so that's it. I'm still teaching martial arts. I'm just teaching martial arts to martial artists instead. All right, that's awesome. So you're, you're just taking your experience, what you're really doing day to day, and you've, you've created the main event. Is that right? Well, we have, MA1 has, um, has events about every other month where there's just one day of events. We've done them in Australia too, where one time my wife, I, my family, my boys, we went to Australia and we did, we did a one day event in Brisbane. And then we actually drove to Sydney because we like to drive at a good time, did a one day event in Sydney. And then we drove and the following weekend did a one day event in Melbourne. And then we tried to drive to Perth, but no car rental companies would rent me a car. We want to do it once, you know? <laughs> and so we flew to Perth and did a one day event there. Um, and so we do those all over in, in Australia, the US, and uh, over in Europe. But the main event is something um, that's, again, another kind of byproduct of everything. Um, there's, there's a lot of conventions here in the US. There's, a, there's tons of them now, but there was only a few big ones at the time. And we just want something a little bit different that offered instructor training as well. Because where most of them were just doing business training, business training, which is important. But sometimes instructors need, and even school owners, want a fresh course on what's what can I do to teach better? Or what can I send my staff to learn to teach better? So MA1 is about martial arts first. So we made the main event, make sure it always has an instructor track and it has a business track. So we do it in the US and we're doing the US now for five years. And this is our second one in Australia. So we just finished ours here in May, the beginning of May. All right, fantastic. And, and so again, that's just something else. It just goes together with MA1 since I'm able to work with so many schools um, more or less my arm got twisted for somebody to put on this event and I guess everyone thinks I had the time to put it together so that's what we did and then in Australia we like doing it because there's only a couple of them over there yes so um, I'm a strong strong believer and I've said this to a lot of people I'm sure people have heard me say this is my wife would always ask me why do you go to so many martial arts seminars and business seminars you know you run all these schools we're doing pretty good at it what are you, you going to go learn I say listen I don't go to them to learn I go to be around like-minded people to help get me motivated about what I do for a living. Because being a full-time martial artist, how many people do we know that do what we do that are in our circle of friends or people we grew up with or even in our family? They all don't think we have a real job. Or they don't get, for those that are out there that have families, that have kids of their own, how do you raise your kids when you run a martial arts school? It's different, you work at night. And my wife and I work together. So we're both running our martial arts schools and we have two boys, 19 and 16 now, and we raised them with doing this. So I want to be around like-minded people, but I'll tell you what, I don't go to learn, I go to get motivated, be around friends, but I always learn something. And that's just the bonus. That's the bonus of going. You know, getting myself motivated to get back to work is a key reason to be there. Learning a little something, that's the bonus. And how can you not learn something being around other martial arts? always going to pick something up. I'm always, even if it's something that I already do, I'm going to learn how to do it one step better. I mean, I've, I've been, I've taught seminars where I've taught people at schools how to do certain things to bring students in. And then I go to the seminar and I talk to them two years later and they're doing it better than I was. And now I'm learning from them how to make the event even better or whatever it was, you know? And so that's what it's all about. Got to share, got to network, got to learn, got to get motivated, got to get back to the studio, get back to work, whether it be staff training, working on yourself, your business planning, retirement planning, uh, merchandising, selling, lease negotiations, whatever. You gotta get out there and learn this. Social media, you, you have to get out there and, and talk to people and figure out what's happening. If you stick to yourself in your own little school, that's fine. Some people will love that and they'll be successful. But if you can rub shoulders with some other people that are like you, that's that's where it's worth it. Be proud of what you do. All right, fantastic. So Fred, you've, you've got an event coming up in Sydney. And yes. it's the 15th to the 16th, the main event. Yes. And I yep. believe it's at the Marriott in yep. North Ride. North Ride Marriott, yes. There we go. So what, what can people, for, for martial arts school owners, what can they expect to get from an event like this? Well, number one, I can tell you last year, um, when my wife and I flew there, we grabbed a taxi from the Sydney airport to North Ride for $110. And we realized afterwards that just up the road, one block is the train. 
and for ten dollars you get back to the airport a lot faster than the taxi ride so there i just saved everybody a hundred dollars this year <laughs> by just just hopping on the train we don't have good train systems here like you guys do and that was just incredible but anyways um again it's about rubbing shoulders and i got i got my schedule here which is on our website right now too um, and if I can say the website really yes. fast in case people want to write it down, it's themainevent.com, but with dashes. So the-main-event.com. And the schedule's up there. Um, it's probably about 99% accurate. There might be a couple little tweaks we still have to do because it just went over to the computer guys and I haven't verified it all. Um, but we keep it with two tracks. We have one side that's, it's called instructors, but it's for everybody. And, then, and it's not always all physical. Some of it is, and some of it isn't, but it's about teaching. That side's about teaching, about your students, or about program directing, working with the people that's in your school. The other side is more business, where it'd be like social media, you're gonna be there speaking, you know, and, and going over what you do and giving people tips on it. Um, it's gonna be about retirement. It's, it's gonna be about staff development. It's gonna be about staff payroll. It's gonna be about bringing in new staff, marketing. So that's how we break it into two tracks. That's why we want it for the whole team. I mean, heck, the one we just did in the U.S., we had 40 people from our own schools go to it, from, you know, 12 and 13-year-old SWAT members all the way up to my master instructors because the SWAT members weren't going to be in the business side. They stayed in the workout side the whole time. They stayed in the instructor side, and they came back, and they were on fire, you know, and getting them on fire and that excited is getting my students excited, and my students get excited retention you know so that's why i i do it just so i can send my staff to it here without a doubt i'm selfish but we have like a uh, paul veldman coming in speaking everyone in australia knows paul does a wonderful job with the schools he's got some great topics he even has an owner's only topic about uh, like an exiting plan we're going on um uh, how to prepare to what are you going to do when it's time to retire uh, a lot of school owners don't think about that but my son who's 19 who runs this school this is his school it just happens to be in my offices He's the head instructor. He just bought a house two weeks ago, you know? And then this past Saturday, he bought himself a new truck. And I only say it because he's 19, but he's also starting to think about retirement. So he's smart like that at a young age. He's putting, you know, he spent a lot of money right now buying a house and a truck, but he's learning what he needs to put away. So in 20, 30 years from now, he's comfortable. You know, he makes a good living, but if he spends it all, as most young people would, He'll have nothing to show for it. So he's already, he's got some stocks and things. So, I mean, that's really important. Um, my wife, Robin's going to be there speaking. And she's, you know, uh, I think the reason I get jobs speaking at different events is because of all the stuff she does at our schools. But her whole job, their organization, besides being a 50 degree black belt, used to run her own school with us, is she oversees all the staff. She's in charge of all the instructor, front counter training, SWAT the events that happen, our yearly calendar. I mean, she puts it all together and everyone goes to her before they come to me. So she's really the one that is on you know, the ground running with everybody. So she's gonna share that. Then I'm bringing Henry Collentog with me. And that was, you know, I love, I bring Henry everywhere with me. Um, he's one of my black belts. He's been with me for well over 20 years, runs one of our franchise stores that he owns. Um, I brought him out last year, his first time in Australia, and did the instructor training. Everybody that took his seminars requested that he comes back. It was 100% unanimous. They all wanted him back, and then everybody wanted him at their school to do a seminar to work with their students because he's just great on how he talks, how he motivates people, and you can't miss him. I tell everybody all the time, he's a six foot three Filipino. You, you, you know, they don't normally grow him that big, but he is. Um, and just does a wonderful job. And he is going to be in Melbourne doing some seminars the week beforehand. And I think he still has one day open. If there is anybody out there looking to have a, a student seminar with him, he's great at sparring techniques or just motivating the kids with drills. So he is available. He's working with a couple schools there. Um, Rod Darling's coming out. Rod's been doing a great job with Facebook and going to be sharing uh, some of his ways of doing that. Let's see. Uh, uh, Daniel Drew from EFC will be there working about conflict. Um, heck, I'm even going to do a seminar or two while I'm there. So uh, it, it, it's, again, it's not just about the people doing the seminars. It's about getting with the other school owners that are there and networking. And here's one big thing that we do over here. Oh, my wife popped in. I'm just going to tell them about the fundraisers we did to help get our team there. Oh, okay. Well, come tell us. You mind if Robin <laughs> speaks a little bit? Please do. Robin's office is in front of mine. So right. There she comes. Right. So, uh, to, oh, to help cover the ex hi, how you doing? <laughs> to help cover the expenses um, 
for our team to go to this, uh, they put together fundraisers. So we had a little dragon tournament. Uh, they went around and taught seminars at each other's locations. Uh, they did inner school tournaments. They did raffles. Um, and they raised all the money on their own to attend the event. So that just helps get everybody there. Yeah, we give them the facility. They came up with some ideas of what they can do. And I'll tell you what, our students and our families, when you tell them what you're doing and why, that they want to learn to be better instructors or going to the big international martial arts event, the students backed them. We had one family at our surprise school walk up to the head instructor and give them a check for $1,000. And he goes, what's this for? You know what? You've done wonderful thing with our kids, and obviously it must be well to do to do that. And they said we just want to support you and the team from this school to go to the event, and they hand them a thousand dollar check. I was like, um, maybe you should give it back to them, and the people didn't want it back. They just said, just take it and go. So I'm thinking we don't charge enough. Right. <laughs> you know, we need we need to charge a little bit more. You know, speaking of that, one of the seminars I'm doing because I talked, I just talked to people about this in passing before, and everyone keeps asking me questions every time we go over it is how we make over $20,000 on a free karate tournament. And it's not about telling you guys or everybody how to throw a free tournament, but what goes with that is other events and activities that we do. And it's, it's not about the free tournament, but it's about how to do things that actually will bring in income for the school that benefits your students as you're doing it. And it doesn't seem like it's anything that's costing your students something, but you end up making a profit in the long run because it has to benefit them and it has to benefit you at the same time. So we like to balance those out. So that's one I'm doing. Another big seminar that we enjoy doing is speed dating is what we call it. People are there last year know what this is. Speed dating it's is, is not actual dating. <laughs> um, if anyone's ever seen anything, I've never been to speed dating, but I've seen it on TV shows. It's where, you know, the bell rings, you go to the next person and talk. The bell. Well, what we do is we put everybody in groups, in about 10 different groups, and we have the different speakers are split between all the groups. And they sit down for 10 minutes with that table and talk about whatever ask questions, have a subject, bell rings, speakers get up, move to the next table. And I like it because it makes it very intimate with each speaker to be there to actually talk to you one-on-one -on -one and do it. You know, this event's small. We can only fit 80 people in the room. We sell out at 80 people. So um, when somebody says, oh, you guys are just selling something, no, I, I have to. I can't get more than 80 people in the room. That's, that's it. So once we get to 80, we have to cut ticket sales. We're not in a gigantic ballroom. We're in an 80-person ballroom. Done deal. Those are there last year know exactly what I'm talking about. It's 80 people with tables and chairs, but it's 80 people. That's all we can fit in there. So we still have some tickets left for it. We love to sell on it, obviously, um, because the more there, the merrier. Plus, I don't want a big bill from the hotel for not selling out. So if we, <laughs> we to be there, we want to, hey, we got to be honest. We want to be there. We want to share with everybody. You want to be able to get back. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We want to do it again and, and maybe get a bigger place. But, you know, I don't mind it being small and intimate. I don't need to be four or 500 people. I, 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 like to, I like to be able to know everyone who's there. Fantastic. So, so everyone listening at the time of recording this, there are how many tickets still left? I think we're about 20, a little over 20 right now. Um, I haven't looked at it today or yesterday. Um, I was out of town all last week, but I did see a couple more things come through. And um, I haven't asked them up front what they might have done that have come in, but from my feel of it, we're about maybe a little over 20 tickets left. All right, fantastic. Okay, so the main event.com, so the dash main dash event.com. And dot com. Dot com. There we go. So not dot com dot au. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, cool. And uh, yes, uh, look. Look forward to seeing you. I'm also going to be there. I'm going to have a booth. Um, so yep. if you, you can ask me questions, anything related to internet marketing, social networking, um, any, anything on the, on the tech side. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not one there to teach about the martial arts side, but that's, that's my, my expertise is in all the digital stuff. So more than happy to help any, any questions that you have. And yeah, really looking, looking forward to the event. It's going to be a yeah, to, you know, one thing I want to I want to add about that with you being there at the booth too, and we appreciate your support coming in because um, you know I, the event I do in the U.S. is a little bit bigger, and without the uh, vendors coming in, I mean, they, it really helps flip part of the bill. I mean, you know, it's, it's it's expensive to put these together, and anyone who puts on events gets what you have to do with hotels. But at this event, since it's smaller, we can only have three vendors. You know, I have two. And so when people are always afraid I'm going to an event and with all the vendors are going to be trying to sell to me, it's like, listen. You're at your table. 
if you have good information, they come up and they talk to you. But the people who are speaking, and I always talk to our speakers about this at all of my events, because I've been to events before. I sat in a room and really was excited to learn something. And all I learned that if I want the information, I could buy the guy's book and video. And, oh, yes. and that was it. Like, I paid big money to be there. So I run a company called Martial Arts First, but I'm not there to sign people up for MA1. I'm there to do from this schedule whatever my subjects are, whatever her subjects are, and give it all away. If you enjoy what we have to say, you want to come talk to me about MA1, then you walk over and talk to me about it. But I'm not going to try to sell it to you. And like uh, anyone that's there that has a booth or is a vendor or has something to sell, I tell all the speakers, we're not selling in our seminars. We're, we're sharing knowledge because people have paid to be there. And if you have something to sell, you do a great job sharing your knowledge, people will come talk to you about it afterwards. That's my belief. Exactly. So in that seminar, we got that hour, let's go A to Z, not A to H and I'll charge you a hundred bucks to get the rest of it. Like, and that's just my philosophy on yeah. it, you know? They've already paid, let's share. If they love you, they're gonna talk to you. And I want all everyone going to know that. You're not gonna have these hard sales going on. Not that any of that ever happens at martial arts events, but we just wanna make sure you know it doesn't happen here. Yes, it is a it is a big trend with free events that the free event is never really a a free event. It's it's just the you know the the foot in the door for something else. And anybody right. that, that, that attends my I, I run a weekly web class where I, I teach things about martial arts uh, well the, the marketing side of martial arts and uh, it, and people would know the first thing I always say is look I'm gonna I, I give you what I can and some of you can take this knowledge and just go and apply it because you you can do that and the others you might need assistance or you might need it done for you then you know raise your hand and I'm happy to discuss further but yeah the right. knowledge the knowledge is the knowledge is free Take it if you can, if, if you need help. Right. Take it well, I got, I got to say something. I'm in a lot of martial art chat rooms, which a lot of them just make me laugh. Um, but what's really funny is all these school owners are always want, want, want. And nobody, of course, on this podcast or no one in Australia whatsoever, but, you know, from other places. And, and you know, you, you answer some questions and you give. And then um, you'd be like, well, if, if you really need one-on-one -on -one time with me, I, I have to charge. You know, um, if we do if it's going. You know, I don't mind answering some questions, but if you want to schedule times, I have to charge. Oh, I'm not going to pay for that. I go, well, how much do you charge your students? Do you give away free private classes? Do you? Well, no. Well, then why do you expect everybody else that's helping you to do it? Now, where you, me, everybody else, we'll give out stuff as much as we can, but there's a time I need to go home and be with my family, and and I can't constantly nonstop. So it's just one of those things that always makes me chuckle, and I'm sure a lot of people listening understand that because. They've been in those chat rooms and they see it. And like nobody in Australia ever does that. But, you know, it's other countries. Uh, <laughs> I won't. I know, I'm joking. Well, you see it every. I mean, you, like I, I, always, I always tell people, you know, if you, if, if you look at what the student's worth to you and you look at the lifetime value of that student, whether that's $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, if you learn one or two things and you can get that return on investment, you know, why not? And, you know, for the price of a ticket of an event, and if you can walk away with one idea that gets you one student, I mean, it's, it's your money back tenfold right there. So I was in the, in the late 80s, mid 80s, whatever, I was taking a private class with my instructor, the guy from a guy named Joe Plaza. Now he's Grandmaster Joe Plaza of Kenpo. He's one of Ed Parker's top guys, and he was in Maryland. And we drove all the way down to do a private class and there's $300. Now, now in the 80s, that's a lot of money. And so as we're doing this, and it was an hour and a half long private class. I mean, that's a long time to do a private class, but we paid him the money because we wanted to learn this advanced Kenpo stuff that we couldn't find anymore. I watched a student come into his school and sign up for a private class for 40 bucks. And I looked at him, I'm like, how come you're charging us $300 and this guy $40? He goes, because that's my student that's already a paying member here. You're going to learn what I'm teaching you, drive back to Connecticut and sell it to students and make money off of it. And I go, you're right. True. So he was teaching me so I can turn around and teach more people where I charge for it. And his student was his student. You know, and so that makes complete sense to me. I know a little bit off subject, but that is true how we have to think about things sometimes. What are you going to do with the information you get? But it, it's it's it is of I'd say it's really it's, it's probably on topic because you know that's what people have to consider. If you are going to invest in your education, then you you got to you got to look at it from the big picture. There's you know there's obviously the the one student that you might get or the two three four 
10, 20, 30 students, but what is that going to be your value in the long term? You know, if you look at right. the knowledge that you take and you apply it, you know, what's the, what's it going to be worth to you over five years? Is it going to oh, yeah. allow exactly. you to open another school? Is it going to, so, so there's a lot of value in, in really why Robin or I, and, and applying it. Why Robin or I are there in Australia at the main event, we are an open book. So when we're not doing a seminar, Ask we're there talking to people <laughs> when, uh, when we have a, we have a mixer, that's on um, what night is that? Saturday night. So Saturday night we do a little mixer downstairs, um, and and that's where we want everyone to come and hang out and chat. And it's like, listen, ask questions. I have nothing to do. When I'm tired of answering questions, I'll go to bed. But the thing is, <laughs> open book. We'll explain more than you ever want to hear when you ask us one question. Okay, and um, and that's what we're there to do. We'll be there. I think we get we get in Thursday. We get in a whole week early, but we're doing some seminars around first uh, around the Sydney. I think I have one day left available. Anybody in the Sydney area looking for something? But we'll um, we're there just to work with people. And then Sunday when it gets done, we're there all day Sunday. And then Monday morning, we're gone. We're we're going all the way to a cruise ship out of Sydney. Fantastic. So, you know, it's yeah. a tough life that we have to lead, but you know, since we already flew that far, we might as well take a vacation while we're there. Exactly. Exactly. You know, but that's the whole thing. Ask questions. Ask us. Ask the other speakers. You know, ask yourself or ask the other schools that are there. So take advantage of just talking and networking. Because I'm gonna, and I tell you what, if somebody asks me a question, I probably learn a lot more than you do from my answer, because it really makes me think it all the way through and make sure that I'm doing it myself. Fantastic, Fred been great chatting to you and Robin as well and the main event.com so the dash main dash event.com thanks thanks for being on today and I will see you in Sydney all right well, hey, thank thanks you. for having us on and it was a lot of fun awesome okay we'll see you guys thank you all right bye now bye